find short notation of equation 5. So the idea here is we need to solve for the four unknown. That means we have to solve the simultaneous linear equation. Now if you look in equation number 6, obviously if you want to solve for the unknown vector A, well, in theory, we just simply take the inverse of the matrix A times the right-hand side vector F. Okay? That's in theory. So let's see what happened. In the next slide, so you can see the unknown vector A is equal to A inverse times F. Okay. So the unknown vector A is equal to the matrix capital A inverse time F. We can substitute equation 7 into equation 3 that we discussed earlier. Let's see what happened to equation 3 in case you forgot. Equation 3, it say that uh, F3 of X is equal to 1 comma X comma X square X cube times the unknown vector A. So that's why when you see equation 7 later on, right here, okay, F3 of X according to equation 3, it say F3 of X is equal to this vector time with the unknown vector A0, A1, A2, and A3, according to equation 3. Now, we can replace this unknown vector, A0, A1, A2, A3, by capital A inverse time F. So that's what we did in here. So now, that's what we have is equation 8. Keep in mind that the matrix capital A is known, and therefore, uh, A inverse is also known, and the vector F on equation 8 is also known. So now, basically, we already know how to find out the cubic polynomial function F3 of X, according to equation 8. Now, here is some more detail. As I said to you earlier, the X0 is equal to A, which is the lower limit of the integration. And then x1, x2, and x3, they have the same increment of h. So this is h, a plus h, and then a plus 2h, x3 equal to a plus 3h. And from my previous slides, we know that the increment h is equal to b minus a over 3 which is the upper limit B subtract the lower limit A divided by three segments. Because for Simpson 3-8 rule, we have to use a cubic equation, which means passing through four points, data points, and that means you have three segments. So, to summarize it, x0 equal to A. x1 is equal to 2A plus B over 3 x2 is equal to a plus 2b over 3, and x3 is equal to b, which is the upper limit. Now, since you know x0, x1, x2, x3, we can use MATLAB software to help us to solve for equation 7. Because as you can remember, if you go back to equation 7, you know, equation 7, we need to do A inverse time F, so we can use MATLAB to help us to do that f inverting the 4x4 four four matrix. Okay? So once you use MATLAB to solve for A inverse, that means we can solve for the unknown coefficient A0, A1, A2, A3, because those A0, A1, A2, A3 is equal to A inverse time F. And once we know those A0, A1, 2, A3, 
then we can define the cubic polynomial function f3 of x. So the problem is done. So there's one way to do it. There's another way we can do uh, in order to find out the cubic polynomial function f3 of x. And the advantage of this is that if we use the so-called Lagrange interpolation function that we already learned from another chapter, the main idea is that if you have four data points unknown, and how can we find out the cubic polynomial function f3 according to Lagrange interpolation function? We can directly write out the cubic polynomial function that go through the four data point. What are those four data point? They are x naught, f, x naught. Similarly, x1, f, x1, x2, f, x2, x3, and f of x3. Those are the four data point that we know. So according to Lagrange interpolation function, directly we can write out the cubic polynomial function L3 as indicated in equation 10. By the way, you can very easily verify to make sure that this equation is correct. For example, when you substitute x equal to x naught, the function cubic polynomial should have the value of fx naught. Let's see if it is true. When x equal to x naught, you can see that you replace x by x naught. In that term, you replace by x. Whenever you see x, you replace by x naught. Whenever you see x, you replace by x naught. Whenever you see x, you replace by x naught. Now, according to this equation, you can see clearly x naught minus x naught is zero. And therefore, the whole second term here is gone. Similarly, when you replace x by x naught, the third term is also gone because x naught subtract x naught. The fourth term is also gone when you replace x by x naught. This term is also gone. And then from the first term, you can see when you replace x by x naught, the nominator and the denominator is the same, so the ratio become 1. Okay? And therefore, all you have is f3 of x is equal to fx naught, which is exactly what we expected right there. And the same thing we can prove for when x equal to x1, the cubic polynomial function will become f at x1. Okay, so the, the advantage of using the Lagrange interpolation function is that we can find out the polynomial cubic function f3 without requiring us to do matrix inversion or solving simultaneous linear equation. So anyway, either using method 1 that requires you to find out the simultaneous equation or inverting the matrix with the help of MATLAB, or you can use method 2 to use Lagrange interpolation. We can find F3 cubic polynomial function without requiring to do matrix inversion. So now, go back to the main idea. How do we calculate the value i? which is equal to the integ integration of the complicated function f of x between the limit from a to b. Keep in mind that this function f of x is a given function. It is a given function, but it could be a complicated function. It could be a complicated function. So like I told you, the idea is that we replace the given complicated function f of x by a simple cubic polynomial function. And as you can remember from the previous slide, the cubic polynomial function in general we can express as a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared plus a3 
xq. And according to my previous slides, we already know how to solve for the coefficient unknown a0, a1, a2, a3 using MATLAB software or we can do it directly by uh, using Lagrange interpolation function. Obviously, after you know the function cubic polynomial f3, then integrating this cubic function is very, very easy. Okay? Because in that case, then the integrating of that function now just simply become a naught x. That is the integration of the first term plus the second term when you integrate it become a one x squared over two plus the third term when you integrate it become a two x q over three plus the last term when you integrate become a three x four over four. Again, keep in mind that a naught, a one, a two, a three you were able to solve it before already. And therefore, the answer you get will be the approximate answer I. Okay? Oh, don't forget, after you do this integration, you have to evaluate this function after you do the integration between the lower limit A and the upper limit B. So after doing all those things, then the expression for I can be shown to be equal to the one that we show in equation 11. So the integration uh, using Simpson 3.8 rule is equal to B minus A, which is the upper limit, subtract the lower limit, time F x naught plus 3 times F x 1 plus 3 times F x 2 plus F x 3 divided by 8 is indicated in equation 11. By the way, B minus A we can express in a different form. And the reason is because the width, the increment width H is defined as B minus A divided by 3 segment. The reason is because we have four data points, that's why we have three segments. So, that means b minus a is equal to 3 times h. So, because of that, we want to go back to the previous slides and we will replace b minus a by 3 times h in equation 11. And now equation 11 will become what we show in equation 12. Okay? So this is the final form of the so-called Simpson one-third rule. This equation here is called uh, Simpson Simpson 3-8 rule. Simpson 3-8 rule for integration. And the reason we call Simpson 3-8 rule is because there's a factor 3-8 in here is indicated in the equation 12. Now obviously Simpson 3-8 rule will have some error and that error could be derived and shown as indicated in equation 13. Okay? Notice that the error is equal to b minus a raised to the power 5 divided by 6480 times the fourth derivative of the function evaluated at the point location eta, where eta could be anywhere between the lower limit and the upper limit a and b. So equation 13 gives you a formula to calculate the error when we use the Simpson 3.8 rule. Now, uh, if you